right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM here in a beautiful San Diego morning. Uh, and I'm joined by Frank Donny, who's a practice leader at Quick Start Strategies, who is in lovely Philadelphia, Pennsylvania today. How are you doing, Frank? Hey, doing great, John. Thank you very much. And Frank, I love, because I was just looking at, um, at Frank's LinkedIn profile, and I love, he says, I help under and erratic performing B2B companies assess revenue, performance, predictability, um, using insights, um, you know, data and, and, and a tool called Revenue Analyzer. Mm-hmm. But I love, the, I love the erratic performing B2B companies, because I'm sure there's a lot of people who's gonna, who are going to listen to this or watch this who are going to say, yeah. um, erratic performing sounds a lot like my company. So what we're going to talk about today is the impact of lead to close one uh, process adoption uh, for CRM data quality. So when you talk uh, talk about a lead to close one process, what do you mean, Frank? Yeah, well, um, it's everything from the genesis of um, somebody you're attempting to connect with, right? So all the way in the lead side from the fact in the moment you get somebody interested in your organization and how do you manage that individual? Um, all the way through the conversion of them to uh, an opportunity and uh, moving that opportunity you know, through the life cycle of selling all the way to the closed one. And we also take it to cash as well. If, if that you know, is something an organization has or has a, a challenge with, which is basically taking them the opportunity and getting it all the way to invoicing. So in that entire world, and you, know, you hear it all the time, there's the, there's the process that you follow, there's the technology that's embedded, and there's the, there's the people that that are using it and uh, what we work a lot with is on the people side because there's plenty of technology out there sure. um, and if you buy any of it whether it's a CRM system marketing automation system um, most of them will do the basics and what you need them to do um, if you have a process which more most organizations have it depends on how you set it up in that where it really breaks down is when the people start to um, diverge from what they were taught and what they should be doing because gravity happens right once they start using it which once, once you teach them if you're not coaching and mentoring them and manage them and tracking them and watching them on a consistent basis that, that, you know, gravity pushes them back to the older behavior. So we spend a considerable amount of time tracking and watching those behaviors and seeing who's erratic and who's underperforming and who's high performing. And I think one of the, one of the most frustrating things that I think a lot of organizations suffer from, and I know this is, this frustrated me in the, in the past is, is you can have a sales process, right? And you can have it, you know, stage five stages, six, whatever it is that works for you. It's the consistency though. It's yeah. because I, I may put something into stage two and you put it into stage and you would put the same, uh, the same type of opportunity yeah. into stage three. And so then as a manager, I'm like, well, it's all confused. So bringing consistency and a, a consistent understanding of where, play, where things should be and what really qualifies things for stages is critically important, right? Yeah, it is. And we have this thing called the four rights. Mm-hmm. And it's, a, um, I guess it's a methodology that we sort of started, um, gosh, five years ago. And, and you have to make these really simple for salespeople to follow. So we always say, look, if you're working on the right opportunity, meaning mm-hmm. you've you, you followed your qualification guidelines and your rules, right? And it's something you should be working on and spending time on. And that's something that you and your manager and also your sales training and whatever methodology you use, right? As long as you're using a methodology and you're sticking to it, right? You should be working on the right opportunity. Should be in the right stage. And mm-hmm. what the right stage is, is hopefully your sales process is aligned to your buyer's journey because the buyers are coming in at any, you don't know, you actually don't even know when they're coming in and when you reach out to them, whether it's organic outbounding or inbounding, I, whenever they come in, they're in some level and you have to match them to uh, your process. So you have to follow the guidelines and then the definitions of your process and any activities and actions that are attached to the particular stage because um, customer activity should be the guideline as to where you are in the sales process mm-hmm. because that's the what we call the de facto measuring stick, right? Because if you don't measure to customer activity, then salespeople can sort of pick whatever they want in the stage. The third one is um, deal valuation. and making sure that opportunities are valued properly in those stages whereby it's just starts. So for example, most opportunities can't be valued in the first two stages this sure. too early. But once you propose something, right, it better be um, valued correctly. And by the way, if you expect a discount, right, the, the discount should already be shown in your CRM system mm-hmm. so that when your executives are taking data out of your CRM system, they're looking at reality versus something that they have to haircut. Yeah. And finally, the close date. And yeah. that's probably 
one of the biggest fields in a CRM system that you need to keep updated. Why? And you know this more than anybody being a CRM company. Uh -huh. uh, most reports drive off of the close date, especially in forecasting and all these other particular things. So having um, salespeople taught how to actually have a dialogue with a customer and ask them really critical questions around close dating is extremely important. So, when, so we look for all those things when we um, analyze CRM data, we look for those behaviors now salespeople are doing. And oddly enough, you can track that in CRM systems and you can actually point to those behaviors and you can apply learning and you can apply coaching to it. Yeah, no, I love them. There's so much to unpack there because I love what you said. But it's funny on the on the close date. I think this is something that resonates with probably every sales leader, sales manager, executive out there is those words. Oh, yeah, I, I need to move that close date. Sorry, I, I need to move that close date. And yeah. it's and I think that's the that's the problem is sometimes as people don't approach this is as a dynamic, you know, it, things are always dynamic and you need to be revisiting them. And I think sometimes obviously um you know sales people put information into the crm and think well i'm done i'm done i put it in i'll put in my close date and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and now i just have to and i think that's the difference is is it really using the process as a guide as opposed to looking at it as a, as a burden right yeah absolutely and hopefully most organizations look at their process and they have sub processes the main process yes. because if you're selling net new customer versus existing customer versus if you're heavy on renewals and you're in a SaaS environment, right? All those are basically different cycles and need to be managed and set up differently in your CRM system. And guess what? Actions and activities and data entry and all those things um, need to be different by those particular, you know, core opportunity types. So hopefully when organizations are looking at how they're selling and how their organization is set up, right? They have that structure in place. Yeah, which is one of the things that one of the key things that we put into our CRM was the ability to have multiple pipelines so you could have multiple proce different processes and also the ability, you know, when you're creating your stages, you're creating steps to complete stages within them, which yeah. is best. Yeah. Which is best yeah. yeah, which is best practice. But one of the things that I also want to come back on is this is more this is not so much the salespeople as a more of an organizational thing is is sales process itself. Right. There's a lot of organizations that go great, we defined our sales process, that's great. <clears throat> and they think that they can leave it sit for the next couple of years, right? Because they've right. done all the hard work. But as you know, I mean, buyer behavior changes, the dynamics of the market change. So your sales process is something you should be revisiting regularly, right? Yeah, consistently because, you know, most organizations aren't in control of the market. They're not in control of their competitors. They're not in control of how their buyers buy. So it's always changing. So they have to have um, specific metrics that they're following in their system. You know, cycle times, leakage by stage, um, you know, product mix that they're selling, um, you know, deal valuation changes, you know, deal slippage, all those particular things that you can measure in your CRM system. And you should be watching as um, both leading and lagging indicators, right? So they need to be able to get that out of the system. But the big challenge that you have is making sure that your salespeople are using it consistently and properly in the first place. Otherwise, what ends up happening is you can't trust the data in your CRM system. Yeah. Well, it's behaviorally related. Yeah, no, 100%, because then you end up with a parallel process of checking the data, <laughs> you know, going back and sort of saying, um, hey, Frank, uh, I'm just looking at the CRM. Let's go and like validate the data instead of, instead of the data, you know, knowing that I can trust the data. You said something, one of the first uh, of the, uh, the four rights was the, the right opportunity, right? Yeah. And I do think that's somewhere where, again, I think it's a lot of that falls on sales management because of where they put their focus, right? Because a lot of sales managers will focus on late stage opportunities, trying to yeah. help them over the line and don't spend enough time working with their salespeople on qualifying properly at the early stages. Yeah, and that's correct. And one of the things that we um, help our clients with is this thing called opportunity profiling. Mm -hmm. I mean, not customer profiling, opportunity profiling. Right. And the opportunity profiling is when you're looking at um, some key requirements such as where did it come from, um, you know, what lead source was it, who generated it up, the typical age of it, um, the typical flow, typical activities, um, the typical data entry points, other particular things that happen against an opportunity. And if you look at your different cycles, and basically if you look back eight quarters and you look at particular data points, you can look at opportunity profiles and how they behave, or opportunity types and how they behave, and you can profile the opportunities. And once you do that, you can teach your managers on how to look at that. And you can look at it by stage. And then 
managers should be actually spending more time in their first two stages, yep. profiling those opportunities in the last. And the reason for that is the efficiency of the salesperson is destroyed in the first two stages, not the last two stages, because, you know, we always say that companies will, you know, they'll scorch earth to close those opportunities in the last two stages, but they forget about what's happening in the first two stages. Yeah. And then, and that is, uh, and, and part of that I think is that it's, uh, it's a great comfort to have lots and lots and lots of stuff in the early stages because it makes you feel comfortable, right? It's like, Oh, there's all this business. <laughs> yeah. I call it, I used to call it the feel good funnel because it makes you yeah. feel really good. Um, but unfortunately it all drops out and there's a lot of wasted activity. And I do think that's a, that's a, a critical point for sales managers is to drag themselves away from the, from the later stages, which I know is where you really want to go because it's great yeah. closing bar and do the, do the work up front because it's, it's going to benefit you, benefit you in the long run. And we did touch on, on the right stage. And I think uh, having things in the right stage, and I think that's back to having a process that's defined both, um, not just not just horizontally, but vertically as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also in the right stage, most orga organizations forget what's the right data that I need to be entering in that stage. So there should be specific. And I always say, you know, when you ask salespeople to enter information, the, you know, what they always say is, well, what do you want me doing? You want me using my CRM system or out selling? And the answer uh, is, the answer is both. Yeah. However, you know, I as an organization need to work my make my CRM system work for my salespeople, not work for management, mm -hmm. not work for finance. But we have to actually sit down with the salespeople and show them the benefit of why they're running particular data. And if we can help them understand their optimal opportunity profile, their optimal customer profile, their optimal cycle times, we can show them right in areas why, whereby if they keep focused, they can actually win more faster. And if you can turn that into a benefit to the salesperson, they'll use that system. But if that system is overloaded with information that they feel is not necessary for them to be entering because somebody wants to do it or wants them to do it, right? It just becomes overloaded and falls down. And, and that's why when you look at the right stage and what you're actually asking them to do, if, if you're asking salespeople to do something in your CRM system that doesn't directly benefit to them, stop mm -hmm. it right now and get rid of it. Yeah, and I, th I think that's a, that's a critical point is absolutely is make sure that you're not, you're not, gathering data for the sake of gathering data you're not exactly. gathering, gathering data that's nice for you to have but it's putting a burden on somebody else to supply it and it's not bringing any benefit to them and that's uh, and and um, and so you need to change those things and again it gets it goes back to the fact that your process should be dynamic you should be going back and revisiting it all the time and saying Absolutely. is this is this critical or is it not yep yeah, and and you were saying then um, deal valuation because that's another interesting one right it's uh because there's a lot of arguments end up about deal valuation, especially in the early stages, which is again where you need to be dialoguing between the managers and the reps, right? Yeah, yeah. And when you look at deal valuation and organizations that basically have, um, you know, their product line and their CRM system, they're picking, you know, they're picking this particular line items and are valuing them using, you know, units and pricing and all type of stuff. Right, the deal valuation becomes a little bit, you know, I guess simpler for the organization. If you're smaller organizations where you don't have that infrastructure and you're basically asking salespeople to just enter the number in the actual value field, right, then it becomes really dangerous. And what managers now, now this is, I'm going to hold managers accountable with the deal valuation because managers have to be asking the right questions about the opportunity mm -hmm. and making sure that the salesperson is putting the right value, has the right value in there, and that they're either having overvalued it. Why? Because they want to inflate their pipeline or they're undervaluing it. And the reason why they're undervaluing is because they don't want management to um, raise the red flag and go, oh, here comes a big opportunity. Let's all get focused on it. So those are all manager behaviors. So those manager behaviors have to be corrected. So in coaching and working with your frontline managers, and those are the people who are the force multipliers, right? If they're not doing it right, neither will their team. So working with them is paramount to really make sure that something like valuation is done properly. Because if you're doing those four rights correctly, you'll be able to report and even forecast out of your CRM system. If you don't do it, what ends up happening is you're forecasting in Excel. And then now you have two versions of the truth. You have what's in your yeah. CRM system and you have what's in Excel. Now you're having salespeople do double entry. And now they feel that their CRM system is undervalued because why? Because I got to go fill out this Excel spreadsheet anyways. So there, that's when you start having your problem. Yeah, and I'll give you, I'll give you a good example of uh, many years ago when I, I took over an organization and there was with the sales organization and then there was this sales operations role that I didn't really understand what that person did or why we had that person and it turned out 
that uh, early on I was told, oh, when, bef when you do your reviews with all the salespeople that I did like every week or whatever it was to look through or month to look through their, their pipeline, um, that person actually calls them the day before to make sure all the data is correct and updated and so that you can do the review with the salesperson. And I was saying, what? So the salesperson puts their data into the CRM and it's not right. Then somebody else calls them up to correct it. And then they have yeah. the meeting with me. And I was like, okay, well, that's, that's a little messed up. And I think that's, that's your point is, is everybody needs to be working off one set of data. And it can't be like the data that I throw into the system and the data that, you know, you review, it's not the same data. Yeah, exactly. And we, we ran a study. Um, it was, I think it was last year. We actually valued that um, uh, on average, um, companies spend about $5,600 per opportunity when the um, opportunity isn't properly managed, $5,600. So yeah. if you start adding that up, if you're a higher volume organization, maybe your cost is a little bit lower. When you're selling enterprise applications, right, that number even becomes higher. Yeah. So if you look at that and you have significant uh, late stage leakage, um, those opportunity costs really become high because you're then including um, subject matter experts and all these yeah. other individuals who become involved. So um, when you look at that cost, right, the efficiency cost, and that's something that the sales operations people really are starting to focus on now, is that cost and efficiency of not properly managing those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think that's such a, such a great point because there are all these costs involved that often don't, and often a lot of organizations don't even calculate them in. It's like when I drag in the subject matter expert or when I say, oh, here, Frank, you wouldn't help me on this deal. Yeah. And, and all of those, and then you lose the opportunity because it wasn't the right opportunity in the first place. There's a lot of cost that's, uh, that's uh, gone into that, right? Yeah. So um, in the last few minutes we have, what are some other uh, pieces of advice you would give to people in order to drive you know, proper CRM adoption? Yeah, um, have a living document. What I mean by living documents, have a business requirements document that you're always looking at when, when you discussed earlier that the sales process doesn't stay the mm -hmm. same. It's always changing. It's moving because your customer is changing, moving. You should have a business requirements document that you're looking at every quarter and you're updating every quarter because salespeople's requirements and your internal requirements change as well. So one of the things that um, uh, we always do for a lot of our clients is we build those documents. And inside of that business requirements document is everything from the sales process to reporting to all those other things that sort of go into it. So one of the best practices is having that document and revisiting it revisiting it all the time. And it, it's, it's not only a strat strategy document, but it's also how you're gonna run and drive your business using your technology. Mm -hmm. The second piece of business is um, having a tech stack and watching that tech stack. And it's a really big thing that organizations are doing right now is they're looking at all the bit, bits and pieces of technology that is from leads all the way to cash, which is what's, what is everything that's being integrated into our technology infrastructure and how are we using it are we getting value out of using those things? And what data can we get out of them? And, and where is that data residing? And what are the additional requirements? And that should go into your business requirements as well, because that's another really big thing that organizations are, are looking at. Um, because um, what ends up happening is everybody has this bright, shiny object problem, yeah. right? The next big thing that pops up and all of a sudden, ooh, I gotta have that thing. Well, you know, not really. So, you know, just make sure that, you know, what you have in your technology stack and what you're investing in, but he's going to benefit everybody as well. And then the third thing is, is really focus the majority, and this is going to maybe sound crazy, but focus the majority of your time working with sales management and working with sales managers on the sales process, working with them on um, um, everything from every step of that sales process, working with them on how to read reports, how to, how to actually correlate data points together to show where salespeople are doing good, but they're not doing so good. You know, coach them on questions they should be asking. All those things that are fundamentally important is where it breaks down. It's all you need is one regional manager um, saying, hey, you know what they're asking us to do? You, you don't need to do that. Once you have one rogue, you have a problem on your hands. And that's why you really have to stay close to the, the frontline sales manager because it's those individuals who will really make and, and make and break you. Because once a salesperson, um, you know, they know what they need to do and they know what they need to be following the system and they will get away with not doing it. Why? Because they truly want to spend more time selling and more time with the client, which is really what they want to be doing. But again, the systems are set up in a way and hopefully they're set up in a way that it makes them more efficient. So they feel that if they use the system the way that they're supposed to, they'll have that more efficient time back. As you said something uh, earlier, 
But if they're, if they're not putting in the right data, keeping their opportunities up to date, they're actually spending more time sending emails and answering questions than if they would have done it correctly in the first place. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I endorse 100% what you just said there about the sales managers, because I think what, what we often do is we don't, as you say, we don't equip the sales managers and we expect, I mean, it's, 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 it's human nature, right? We say, here's a system that you have to use and you have to enforce with your people. But if I'm a sales manager and I don't really know how to use it properly, I haven't been shown, I haven't been trained, I'm yeah. not going to make myself, uh, yeah, human nature, I'm not going to make myself look stupid in front of my salespeople. I'm going oh. to do exactly what you said. I'm going to nod in a wink and say, hey, I don't worry about it. Let's just have a conversation. Yeah. So, so equipping the sales managers who are the greatest revenue multiplier at the end of the day, I think is, is absolutely critical. Yeah. So before we finish up, uh, Frank, uh, I wonder if you tell people a little bit more about yourself, your organization, how they can learn more and the types of services you offer. Yeah, great. So um, uh, Quickstar Strategies, um, we were founded in uh, 2014, uh, and we specialize in really assessing organizations using uh, their existing CRM information. And from that, then we look at three main areas. So the performance of the organization and how they're performing, and, we, and inside of that, then we have services that we offer where it be, we need to um, generate more net new customers, whether we need to, what we call ignite existing customers, which is, you know, the, your typical cross sell, upsell, or, or share of walking. So we have services that we offer around helping organizations do that to um, helping organizations then work on what we call their predictability. And their predictability is all about the sales process. We help organizations um, either A, create sales process and buyer's journeys, and then, um, integrate those into their CRM system, and that would include um, actually helping them put it into the CRM system and then train their salespeople and train their uh, frontline managers on following the sales process. And then finally on the insight side, right, we actually then help either A, build reports for organizations in their existing CRM system based off of best practice metrics and KPIs we have. And then we also offer a benchmarking system um, and service because over the last six years, um, we've assessed uh, nearly 1,400 companies using our survey, and we also have about 212 companies in our benchmark database, which is information from stage to stage and how organizations are performing. And we can actually use that information and then align it to um, our application called Revenue Analyzer, which is our um, what we call our correlation engine that we put your CRM data into, and then we actually then can correlate the data together, and then we can benchmark your organizations and point to areas whereby you're either a high performer, an erratic performer, or an underperformer, and then provide insights and recommendations on how to correct those. And if you should choose to, you can hire an organization to help you solve those challenges. Yeah, that's fantastic, uh, Frank. Uh, and well needed services, I can tell you, because it, it's all getting more and more complicated. Uh, Frank Donny, thank you. It's been a pleasure today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John. I appreciate your time. Bye.